The Twelve Apostles of Jesus In Capernaum, situated on the northwestern shore of the Lake of Galilee, fed by the waters of the Jordan River, coming from Hermon, Jesus began his healing and preaching. There, the Master gathered countless followers and sympathizers of his doctrine of love. The Messiah, among many, chose twelve companions who would be the interpreters of his actions and teachings. They were humble and simple men. Peter, Andrew and Philip came from Bethsaida, where James and John, the sons of Zebedee and Salome, also came from. Matthew, Thaddeus and James, sons of Alphaeus and his wife Cleophas, were Nazarenes who had known Jesus since childhood and had deep affinities. Thomas was descended from an old fisherman from Dalmanuta, and Bartholomew was born to a hard-working family from Cana of Galilee. Simon, later called the Zealot, had left his land of Canaan to devote himself to fishing. Judas of Iscariot was a merchant in Capernaum, where he sold fish and trinkets. In a sublime moment, in Peter's home, the Master Jesus, with the objective of spreading the good news, gathered the twelve apostles and gave them the first instructions concerning the great apostolate. Beloved, do not take the broad way where all people go, carried away by easy and inferior interests, you will seek the rough and narrow road of sacrifices, for the good of all. Neither shall you enter the centers of sterile discussion, with strife, which do not profit the building of the true kingdom in the hearts with sincere effort. Go rather in search of the lost sheep of our Father's house, which find themselves in affliction and voluntarily banished from his divine love. Gather with you all who are in anguish of heart and tell them, for my part, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Work to heal the sick, Clean the lepers, resurrect those who are dead in the shadows of crime or the ungrateful disappointments of the world. Enlighten all the spirits that are in darkness, giving for free what is given to you for free. Do not display gold or silver in your garments because the kingdom of heaven reserves the most beautiful treasures for the simple. Do not gather the superfluous in saddlebags, tunics, or espadrilles for the journey, because the worker is worthy of his sustenance. In whatever city or village you enter, find out who wants to bear the goods of heaven, with sincerity and devotion to God, and apportion the blessings of the gospel with such as are worthy, until you depart. When you enter a house, greet it with love. If this house deserve the blessings of your dedication, may your peace descend upon her. If, however, it is not worthy, return that same peace to your hearts. If no one welcomes you or wishes to listen to your instructions, leave shaking off the dust from your sandals, that is, without harboring any grudge and without contaminating yourselves with other people's iniquity.
Truly, I say to you, the day will come when great sinners will find it less severe than those who seek God with lips of false belief, without sincerity of heart. For this reason I send you like sheep to the den of wolves, recommending that you have the simplicity of doves, and the prudence of serpents. Beware therefore of men, our brethren, for ye shall be handed over to their courts, and ye shall be scourged in its sumptuous temples, from which the idea of God is exiled. You will be brought as defendants before governors and kings, ofterants and unbelievers, to witness my cause. But, in the painful days of humiliation, do not worry about how you will speak, for my word will be with you and you will be inspired, as to what you will say. Because we are not the ones who speak, our Father's loving Spirit speaks in all of us. In those days of shadow, when the world will fight for my name, the brother will deliver his own brother to death, the father the children, spreading in the paths the sinister trail of the wolves of iniquity. Those who follow me will be despised and hated because of me, but the one who perseveres, to the end will be saved. When, therefore, you are persecuted in one city, move to another, because truly I say to you that you will never be on human paths without my thoughts accompanying you. If you have to suffer, consider that I too came to earth to bear witness and that a disciple is not more than a eacher, nor a servant more than his master. What I teach you in private, spread it publicly, because what you now hear in your ears will be the object of your preaching from the rooftops. Work for the kingdom of God and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot annihilate the soul. Rather fear the evil feelings that plunge the body and soul into the drama of conscience. Jesus' recommendations were heard as if time had stopped for those companions present in Simon Peter's simple home. The intimate note of joy and hope pervaded the countenances of all. The apostles wanted to contemplate the glorious future of the gospel of the kingdom of God, and their hearts were filled with joy. Through the messianic task of the apostles, the flame of the good news spread like a great gleam of light that reached the hearts of men of good will. The evangelical sayings of the Lord, recorded on parchments and papyri, were pioneered by the publican Matthew, the Levi, who wrote between the years of 50 and 55 after Christ. Then Mark, nephew of Barnabas, hearing the wonderful narratives of the Apostle Peter, wrote between the years 55 and 62 after Christ. Luke, who worked in medical services on a large ship, still very young, in one of his trips, heard the preaching of Paul of Tarsus, and his heart was touched by the new revelations. 
Two years later, Luke met Paul again in Troas, and from then on, devoted himself to Christian doctrine. Luke, through the reports of Paul himself and of Mary, mother of Jesus, obtained through visits to their home in Ephesus, wrote the Gospel in the years 63 to 67 after Christ. And John, after his period of seclusion on the island of Patmos, wrote his mystical gospel in the years 96 to 104 after Christ. All the apostles suffered martyrdom and gave their lives so that the gospel would be the sure roadmap of enlightenment for mankind, as the darkness of ignorance and lovelessness prevailed in Caesar's time. Thank you.